All right, so today we're just going to talk about some uh, exponential functions. So for instance, COVID-19, um, we're going to talk about how it's an exponential function and what's that mean about the near future or projected numbers that the government has been coming out with lately. Um, even though we're missing a lot of information and a lot of factors, we're going to do it as simply as possible just to get a feel for um, the future of exponential growth. So right here I have uh, several dates, and this is the infected in Canada. Um, so these numbers are actual data from uh, the government's website. And what we're doing is I'm looking at March 27, 28, 29, and I'm putting how many people were infected. And to find the actual growth, it's kind of like first differences where we subtract. But be, because this is an exponential growth, I'm going to divide these numbers, or a better way to think of it is, what do I have to multiply to get from 4757 to 5655? Well, I got to multiply by 1.18. So I did this for every single number here, and I got all these numbers. Um, so just for simplicity, I'm going to average these numbers to about 1.15, and I'm going to call this our exponential growth. Obviously not entirely accurate, um, but good enough for what we need to do. So now I'm going to go here, and in our exponential growth formula, which is A times B to the X, I'm going to actually plug in whatever my growth is. I called it 1.15, so this is going to be 1.15 to the X. Okay, so this is gonna be my growth. Now, what's my A value? My A value is wherever you start at. So technically at the beginning of all of this happening, we start at one person, the first infected person. But because I'm gonna use these numbers, I'm gonna start at 4757. Okay, and this is actually similar to the compound interest formula where this is your interest rate. Let's say you're getting 15% interest and you start with 4757 dollars, um, this is how compound interest is actually calculated. And we can say Y or the infected rate, whatever it is over there. Now, exponential growth, you have to consider that you have, you're finding 15% of the previous number, but you're also finding 15% of that 15%. And as this keeps stacking up, this is why exponential growth kind of looks like this. All of a sudden from here, we start climbing exponentially. Now, just like investing, people don't really you know, understand investing as a future source of income because they think about these numbers right here. Well, I'm only making this much in two years. I'm only making this much in three years. They're not understanding this part over here of the graph. And the same thing with COVID-19. Everyone is looking over here. Oh, the increase isn't that significant. I don't see how this is an epidemic or a pandemic, whatever the case may be. But the, the experts who are fully versed in exponential growth are looking here. They're saying, if we don't do something over here, these numbers are gonna continue until this starts skyrocketing. So let's take a look at what these numbers mean and how we can get here. So for instance, this is our full equation. And this is with a, a pretty conservative growth of 1.15. Uh, before this time, uh, during the March break or just after the March break, it was actually like 30%, so double this. Um, so this is a very conservative number. So what we're going to do, we're going to figure out in two days what the infected rate is. Okay? And we're going to get 6336-ish because this is 1.18, this is 1.12, 1.15 isn't exactly the exponential growth factor. Um, actually, I'm not going to do two days. I'm going to do two days after this. So this is one day, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's plug in seven. And we're going to see what we get. And this should be my April 3rd infected number, give or take a little, again, because of the estimated 15% growth. So if I put this in my calculator, I'm going to get a number, and that's going to be my April 3rd number. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so I picked up my calculator, and here it is. I plugged in 4757 times 1.15 to the exponent 7, and I got 12... 1,653. So with this model, after today, we should have 12,653 people infected in Canada. So that's a good thing to kind of look up today to see if this is accurate or not. Okay, now, um, what could we use this for? Well, we can use this for 
extrapolation. So when we're looking inside the data, which is the numbers that we already have given, if I want to look, you know, between March 29 and March 30th, this is interpolation. But if I want to look further on into the future, this is called extrapolation, um, I can plug in a certain value for X, like 15 days, 30 days. I want to figure out at April 30th, like the government released today, what numbers are we looking at? I can just plug in that value into X and see what my projection is. Now, what I want to do instead, because you've probably experienced this in your homework, is figure out what is it going to take? How many days need to pass for the entire population of Canada to be infected? Um, so we're going to estimate the entire population of Canada to be 37 million. Okay, so this is our full population of Canada. Um, so we want to figure out when will Y be 37 million? When will Y be 37 million? And this is going to equal 4757 times this to the X. So this is a scenario where we have to solve for X and this is going to tell us how many days need to pass with this exponential growth for 37 million people to be infected from March 27. And it seems like it's probably going to be a long time because a number for like 4757 is pretty far away from 37 million. Um, so let's see what happens. So we're going to solve for X. I got to divide by 4757. Right, I'm slowly solving for x, 47.57, this equals 1.15 to the x. I'm going to pick up my calculator and divide that, 37 divided by 4.757, this equals 7.778, and I'm just rounding for simplicity. Okay, from here, I'm going to find the log of both sides. So you've probably used this in chemistry. And it brings down my exponent of x. This is why I use log. Now with my exponent finally down in the same line as everything else, I can solve using all the strategies I've learned in previous years. For instance, I can divide by log of 1.15. I don't really want to figure out what it is because it's going to be a decimal number that I don't want to write down. So I'm actually going to divide both sides by log 1.15. And this will give me the exact value of x in days. So I'm going to pick up my calculator. Um, I'm going to find the log, if I can find that button right here. That's ln. Log of 7778, close brackets, divided by log of 1.15. I'm going to push equals and I get 64 days. Okay, so now this 64 days might be alarming. This is actually how long it's going to take with a 15% growth um, for the entire population of Canada to be infected by COVID-19. Um, so is this alarming? Is this worrisome? I don't know. I guess to each their own, but this is the nature of exponential growth. This is what a lot of people don't see in growth. This is why we have a big financial literacy problem. People don't understand that with exponential growth, you grow in the future. Uh, it's more about delayed gratification. I mean, I mean, that's kind of morbid to say about COVID-19. It's kind of the opposite. Um, but what we want to do is lower the 15%. This is all we can do as a society. So if you want to do your part and maybe lower that by 0.00001%, you can. And if, the, if more people do that, we can maybe change this 15% to 10%, therefore changing this number to something closer to 80, for instance. If this number is closer to 80, the entire population will be infected in a longer period of time, which gives healthcare workers and hospitals more time um, to adjust to the problem, to create more space for those who need it. Um, if this number was 20% and we only have 40 days to reach this critical point, um, that would be a, a very big worry because we don't have the hospital space to house this many people in such a short period of time. And now 37 million people obviously don't need hospital care if they even have COVID-19. It's a very small percentage. 
um, but we still want to increase this number as much as possible. So things like social distancing, physical distancing, everything you have to do, washing your hands, is all doing your part to help reduce this 15% to 10% to 9% to 11%, whatever the case may be, and increase this number right here, this 64, to a higher number. So we give our healthcare workers time um, to help everyone who needs help.